The name of this sharing is Entering the Beautiful Gate. Entering the Beautiful Gate. And to get into our study, let's go to Acts chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 2, first of all. Acts chapter 3 and verse 2. All right, you ready? And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So this is a story of a lame man. Um, most of us see it as a story of healing, but, you know, the, it's just a fact that we all have spiritual infirmities, and um, those dealings, a healing is not going to fix. It's going to be about a spiritual change. And um, what we want to apply this to is a spiritual change in relationship to Christ in you. And that reality that Christ will be the change instead of just the, the changer, the man who does the changing. Um, <clears throat> so the story in this, this verse 2 is just full of stuff right here. Uh, the first thing it notes is that he was a lame man. The next thing that it takes note of is that this was from birth. So this was from the fall, uh, if you will. And then there is this usage of this word they. It's in, kind of in the middle of verse 2 there. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. And... Um, and, but then it mentions him, specifically him, uh, that uh, he, he's the one. They, they carried him to the temple. They carried him to the gate beautiful. But he carried himself in the sense of once they dropped him off, it was up to him to be able to get help. And, um, and then it says that he was laid daily at the gate of the temple, laid daily. So what this is talking about is that he was dealing with this infirmity every day of his life, every day of his life. And then in this very short verse, it tells us where. And it was at the gate, uh, in, it was in front of the gate of the temple, and that gate's name was beautiful. And then finally, um, he would ask alms, not of the people who carried him there, but he would ask alms of the people who entered in. The people who entered in. Okay, so I jotted down three questions. Just this is uh, just to make a sort of consider a couple of things. My first question was, where do I stand spiritually when the gate of the temple called Beautiful has closed and there are no people around to show sympathy, give help, or prayers? In other words, I'm putting us rather in the place of this lame man and this, this ordeal, you know, just trying to get alms, but what when the gate is closed? And we're left there alone. And let's say that the, the people that came to carry him, maybe one of them had a situation and they couldn't get there right away or they had to find somebody else. And so he's left there with the gate closed and there are no people giving him sympathy or prayers or things like that. And um, the next question is, where am I with Jesus when I'm left alone with my infirmity? And most of us kind of, <laughs> can answer that one because we've we've all uh, come to a place where it seemed like everyone was gone in every situation and we're left alone with ourself with with our problems with our issues and it can get pretty dark at times um, so uh, and then uh, question number three does my spirituality depend upon a, people who carry me, or also be, uh, being close to the beautiful gate, or those who give special attention to me. So you have 
uh, you have all of that as a factor in this in this story. All right, so I want to be, just sort of begin with this thing of two different kinds of helpers, two different kinds of helpers, okay? And uh, the first is helpers to get me to the right place, and that's these people who carried him to the temple. So the right place is the temple because that's where good people are and people maybe even that have money and uh, that's a that's a good place so so they were helpers to get this man to the right place now it didn't really change anything of his condition but it was it was help the second group is um, of helpers is helpers to get needs met and this is the ones who were going in, who were entering in, and they were entering into the temple, and um, they would give alms. Some would give alms, and so they were. Both of these are helpers in different ways. Um, and then, in our story, which we haven't read yet, there's another kind of group. Okay, so we have helpers to get me to the right place helpers to get me the right stuff, if you will. But there's next. this next group is just really confined to two people, Peter and John. So I want to read a verse 2 collectively within verse 1 through uh, 8, and we'll see the full fullness of the story. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. <clears throat> Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, and most of us ought to be able to quote this here by learning it from children's songs, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Not just walk, but rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered, entered with them into the temple. Entered with them, this, this group, this small group, into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So... This lame man had been brought there many, many times. His, basically his whole life almost, the way it makes it sound, because he was lame from birth. He'd been brought there many, many times before. But what, what was it that made the difference this time? And that's, that's the key. And that's what we want to sort of focus on now. Um, as I said, there was another group this was a group of two, but it was it was a special group because they were carriers of Jesus, not just carriers of the needy, not just helpers. But they, in fact, as we'll see in the story, they didn't help in truth. They wouldn't take any credit. They were carriers of Jesus, and that's what they brought this man. And um, so there are, there are helpers who carried him. There are helpers who gave to him. And there are helpers who bring Jesus. And so uh, let's read uh, the rest of that story, beginning with verse 9. And... Uh, all the way through 12. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. 
<laughs> this just kills me. They knew that it was the guy that was lame that sat there begging for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel, marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. So, um, Peter's response is, don't look at us. Don't think that we did a good deed like the four people who carried him every day, bless their hearts, or that we did something like many of you that have given alms before. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. See, you got to put this in context of real life. Today, if somebody was healed and everybody ran together, uh, the person who, who, through whom the Lord worked would claim that he's a miracle worker or a healer and he would want to gather people and he would say, look on me as a great man of God. I mean, I'm just being honest. It would be just the opposite of what's happened here. And the spirit in which worked in these guys, John, uh, uh, Peter and John, the spirit of the Lord that said, this is not us. This is not, we take no credit for this. Um, not our own holiness or power. And I know a whole lot of Christians that are working on trying to be more holy or get more power from God so that they can do great things for God. And James, uh, Peter and John just um, sort of became less. Became less. And got small. And, and probably weren't thinking along those lines. Well, let's go up to the temple and get this man healed. I don't believe they were. Spontaneous life within them. It's called Jesus. It's called Christ in you. That's the hope. That's the hope. All right, so, but I love this next verse, which I did read part of it. I'm only going to read the first half of it this time. And this is Peter's response, not just not, don't look on us, it's not our holiness, it's not our power. Listen to this. <laughs> the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, here it is, hath glorified his son. This is God glorifying his son. This is, okay, so this is not just a healing. This is not just uh, making us into healers. This is not just compassionate ministry. This is God glorifying His Son in us and through us. And, and God the Father has given glory, all glory to His Son. And they did too because they knew the heart of the Father and they knew the source and the source wasn't them. So let's talk about beautiful now. Beautiful. All right, you women, quit thinking about yourself right now. <laughs> we want to talk about the Scripture and what it refers to here. Romans 10. Romans 10, 14, and 15. <clears throat> and this has to do with, with also speaking forth and that which is life in us and that which is based on Him not us. 
Verse 14, Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? This is like the, the lame man. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful! How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and glad tidings of good things. How beautiful was Peter and John's feet that carried them to the temple and ran into this guy and released life. Released life. So, we, 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 we bring the message of life. We bring uh, the reality of Christ in you as their life. This is what we preach. This is what we release. We don't believe that there's just power in truths, uh, and even if they're the deepest truths around. We believe in the life of Christ. And we believe in Christ in you, in them, and in you, and in me. That and we're, we, if we believe that, then we do not believe in ourselves. We do not put hope in ourselves. We don't disbelieve in ourselves. We just don't consider ourselves. Let me, but let me show you that this is in relationship to that. Uh, this is still in Galatians. I'm sorry, Romans 10, and this is verse six and seven. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Hmm. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Uh, we, I got to get a hold of Christ. We need Jesus. We need to pray. We need to bring God down right here into this meeting. He says, don't say that. Don't say that. Verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Oh, well, we just need to get him up out of, out of death. That's what we need. Get him out of death. Don't say that. Don't. No, no. Stop saying that. <laughs> Not only don't say it, stop saying it. But, verse 8, sorry, also we're going to verse 8. But what saith it? What saith the Word of God to us? The Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is, this is still the beautiful feet, people, that we talked about in just a few verses down. Alright, so let me read this. Listen carefully. At the beautiful gate of your temple, at the beautiful gate of your temple, I shall be infirmed no more, but shall enter in, for Jesus is that beautiful gate. The man finally got to enter into the beautiful gate, but it was Jesus that he entered into. I mean, he entered into that physical building, but that wasn't what he was rejoicing over. He had life. Something brought him alive. Didn't just heal him, it brought him alive. If it was just healing, he could say, well, this is really great. But he was walking and leaping and he was just praising God, not those men. So, let's, let's ask ourselves this final question and then we'll pray. Do we bring Jesus as life or just help people? Oh, in the name of Jesus, we help people. In the name of Jesus, we carry people to the church. In the name of Jesus, we give finances or help. Or are we of those that bring life, that deliver Christ the life uh, that, that they need, that changes everything. 
from what we know, Peter and John never met this man before, certainly never confronted him. So the only thing they ever did was give him life that changed everything. My heart is that we dig deeper in the Word, not to be Word searchers, but to be hungry, those that are hungry to have Him formed in us that we may release that life to other people. Let's pray. Father, we just love You so much that You have called us to preach the life that is in us and to preach to them it is Christ in You. Father, we thank You. Yes, we... Like Paul said, well, I've, you know, I baptized so and so, but I don't count that, and I, I, I did this and that, but that's not really what I'm about. I'm here to preach Christ and Him crucified. He didn't even want to count those things. He was almost embarrassed to mention that, because, not that he didn't do it, but that he wanted, he wanted that life. He want he. He wanted your Son to come forth out of Him and to come into other people and them live by the same Christ in them that He was living by. Lord, give us a hunger, hunger, a hunger more of Jesus. Not more ministry, not more compassionate ministry. But more ministry to You so that in looking at You, and ministering to you, we are changed. And that change, we, as the scriptures follow that, those scriptures, that our ministry changes. And it's no longer using the Word of God deceitfully, but to minister the life of Christ and to have Him form. Father, we love you. We love Your Son. We love the Holy Spirit. We love You. And we want to be about You, not about ministry. In Jesus' name.